Environmental pollution, such as that in the case of Minamata disease, does not just suddenly occur one day. It develops gradually and is indicated in various ways. Such pollution affects not only the natural environment, but also, of course, human beings. Minamata city currently has a population of over 30,000. It is located on the coast of the Yatsushiro Sea in the southern part of Kumamoto prefecture and is greatly blessed by its land and sea environment. Minamata disease, a result of industrial pollution brought about by human beings, had a disastrous effect on the area and made the name Minamata known throughout the world. Chisohiryo Corporation, the forerunner of the Chiso Corporation, built a carbide plant in Minamata in 1908. As the plant expanded, the demand for labor grew and the population of Minamata increased. In 1956, two sisters, two and five years old, were brought to the hospital attached to Chiso, showing neurological symptoms of an unknown cause. The director of the hospital considered these cases unusual and reported them to the Minamata Public Health Center in May of that year. This was the official discovery of Minamata disease. A committee was immediately organized to investigate the cause of the disease and began looking into the area where the patients lived. In August 1956, the committee asked the Kumamoto University School of Medicine to investigate the cause of the disease. In November, the research group of Kumamoto University reported that the disease might have been brought about by heavy metal poisoning, resulting from the consumption of toxic fish and other marine products. In March 1957, the head of the Minamata Public Health Center conducted an experiment that involved feeding cats seafood from Minamata Bay and showed that the cats developed the same symptoms. This experiment provided a great step towards uncovering the cause. The research group at the Kumamoto University School of Medicine noticed that the symptoms were similar to those of organomercury poisoning, which had been reported by Hunter and Russell. Furthermore, the group detected a high concentration of mercury in the sediment of Minamata Bay. In July 1959, the group announced its belief that Minamata disease was a disease of the nervous system caused by the consumption of seafood caught in and around Minamata Bay. Although the group also strongly suspected mercury as the primary cause of the symptoms, it took a long time to finally determine the causative substance because of refutation by Chiso 
and various opinions raised by the Japan Chemical Industry Association. In 1965, it was reported that patients with organic mercury poisoning had also been found in the Ogano River Basin in Niigata Prefecture, far from Minamata. This was the outbreak of Niigata Minamata disease, the second case of Minamata disease. In 1968, the government announced its official view that Minamata disease was a toxic disorder of the nervous system caused by methylmercury. It was officially concluded that methylmercury was produced in the process of manufacturing acetaldehyde by Chiso in Minamata and by Shoadenko in Niigata. Methylmercury was discharged with waste water from the plants of these companies, polluting the water and was concentrated in various fishes and shellfishes. The disease was caused when inhabitants of those areas ate these marine products in large amounts. Minamata disease is a neurotoxic disorder caused by methylmercury. The symptoms vary from mild to severe type, depending on the mercury concentration, the duration of methylmercury exposure, and patient sensitivity to methylmercury. Patients generally have symptoms such as numbness of limbs, tremor, disturbed sensations, stumbling, disability to fasten buttons and put on clothes, narrow visual fields, and hearing disturbance. When a woman is exposed to methylmercury during the pregnancy, the fetus is intoxicated with methylmercury, which is absorbed through the placenta. The born child showed cerebral palsy-like symptoms such as delay of psychomotor development, abnormal muscle tone, motor dysfunction, and impairment of speech. Taking a look at the mechanism by which methylmercury is taken up into the brain, there is a special barrier that prevents chemical agents from entering the brain or placenta from the blood vessels. Although essential substances such as amino acids can cross the barrier, harmful substances normally cannot. By combining with an amino acid named cysteine, methylmercury comes to resemble another amino acid called methionine and passes easily through the barrier. With the announcement of the government's official view, negotiations over compensation started between the patients and Chiso. However, the negotiations did not go smoothly. Some patients filed a lawsuit in Kumamoto District Court to claim damages against Chiso. The case was decided in favor of the patients. This judgment led the patients to conclude a compensation agreement with Chiso. Certification of Minamata disease is synthetically carried out by medical experts on the basis of diagnostic criteria. In this criteria, two factors are taken into consideration. The first is the exposure to methylmercury from seafood, and the second is the patient's signs and symptoms. Besides the easily distinguished type of Minamata disease often seen in the days when the disease was first discovered, an incomplete type of Minamata disease also exists, as do mild cases. 
making it difficult to distinguish cases of the disease from those of other maladies. This has resulted in delays in certification and for many applicants has resulted in their not being certified. This has contributed to their distrust of the administration and has led to some points of conflict among the citizens. Persons who are not certified as having Minamata disease demanded relief by way of independent negotiations with the companies responsible or filed lawsuits for damages against the central and prefectural governments and Chiso or Shawadenko in many places throughout the country. Although the court suggested reconciliation, no compromise was met and the lawsuits lasted nearly 20 years. On a more positive note, from 1974 through 1990, many efforts were undertaken to improve the environment, including the intensive capture of toxic fish, research into the mercury concentration in marine products and seawater, and installation of dividing nets in Minamata Bay, as well as the reclamation of a part of the bay by dredging toxic sludge to one side of the bay and covering the dredged sludge with non-polluted dirt. Although no solution had been reached despite years of attempts, events took a new turn with a shift in the power balance in the diet in 1994. In September 1995, the coalition government of the Liberal Democratic Party, the Japan Socialist Party and the new party Sakigake presented a solution. Most groups of patients expressed their acceptance of this solution by December. At a cabinet meeting, the government gave its consent to this agreement between the parties concerned and authorized the Prime Minister's announcement for the settlement of the problems of Minamata disease. The solutions are currently being implemented. Experiences with Minamata disease are being used in positive ways. The National Institute for Minamata Disease provides many countries, mainly developing ones, with the results of Japanese studies and technical know-how regarding mercury-related problems. The Environment Agency holds seminars abroad in order to share Japanese experiences of the tragedy of Minamata disease. Concerned local governments are also actively working to build environment conscious communities as well as carry out projects that rebuild the bonds within communities that were broken by Minamata disease. They are working to spread information about their experiences of Minamata disease, both at home and abroad. The sea was both our playground and an integral part of our lives. 
The fishermen's vegetable fields were between the village and the beach, and people would wash their clothes in the sea and dry them on the beach. We used to play softball on the beach and play house using seashells for rice balls. To take whatever life gives you and give thanks for it, that is the medicine you derive from living with Minamata disease. And it is my source of energy. Through living with this disease, I have learned to see the good in anything and everything. At the time Minamata disease was spreading, people in the neighborhood were afraid of sufferers like me. For instance, it was said that if you visited the house of someone with Minamata disease, you shouldn't talk for long, and you certainly shouldn't accept any tea or water you were offered. On the bus, people refused to sit next to me trying to avoid catching my disease. And if the bus was crowded and we were all standing up, people would twist themselves all different ways to avoid having to touch me. Or people passing in front of my house would cover their noses and mouths with their hands and hurry past, returning to normal as soon as they finished passing by. I really think it's tragic the way 58 hectares of Minamata Bay had to be turned into reclaimed land. Minamata disease has destroyed nature, ruined people's health, and even cost people their lives. My health too has ended up like this, and it is all such a huge shame. One thing I regret is that I never used to say I came from Minamata when I would go to some other region. Now I say quite proudly that I live in Minamata and that, yes, I suffer from Minamata disease. We ourselves need to be educated if we want the people of the world to know what happened here and if we want to ensure that environmental pollution like the kind we had in Minamata never happens again. Giving economic activities priority without consideration of the environment has not only produced numerous victims of tragic disease, but also destroyed the natural environment and wreaked serious effects on human relationships. With the damage and suffering caused by pollution as a turning point for the country, measures to protect the environment have made dramatic progress in Japan. But the sacrifices incurred along the way including those in Minamata, were huge. The tragedy of Minamata disease taught the world how important it is to take precautions against pollution. It is essential to keep this experience clearly in mind and make full use of it in the future, so that such a tragedy never happens again anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm.